and welcome to the next video in my series on finite mathematics. Now a few things before we get started. Number one, if you're watching this video because you are struggling in a class right now, I want you to stay positive and keep your head up. If you're watching this, it means you've accomplished quite a bit in your educational career up to this point. You're very smart and you may have just hit a temporary rough patch. Now I know at the right amount of hard work, practice and patience, you can get through it. I have faith in you, many other people around you have faith in you, so so should you. Number two, please feel free to follow me here on YouTube and or on Twitter. That way when I upload a new video, you know about it. And on the topic of the video, if you like it, please give it a thumbs up. Put it on a playlist. Share it with classmates or colleagues, because it does encourage me and other screencasters to continue making our videos. On the flip side, if you think there is something I can do better, please leave a constructive comment below the video and I'll try to incorporate those ideas into future ones. And finally, just keep in mind that these videos are meant for individuals who are relatively new, or brand new for that matter, to finite mathematics. So I'll just be going over very basic concepts. And I will be doing so in a slow, deliberate manner. Not only do I want you to understand what's going on, but also why. So all that being said, let's go ahead and talk about this video's topic. This video is the next on the topic of sets and counting. So in previous videos we talked about what sets are, we talked about what elements of sets are, we talked about unions and intersections and subsets and disjoint sets and things of that nature. In the video before this one we started talking about Venn diagrams of what they are and how they represent data visually. So in this video I'm going to share with you a method that I use with students when I tutored finite mathematics. And this is a way to make solving Venn diagram problems very concrete. So we're going to develop this method so whatever is thrown at you, you can actually do it step by step in a very logical, systematic manner and that will allow you, of course, to get the correct answer. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Now, What about this Venn diagram region method? So it starts with a couple of basic ideas. Remember that any Venn diagram can be broken down into several discrete regions. And I'll show you that here in a second. Now each set, subset, intersection, or union, etc. can then be written as a list of whatever regions comprise that. So we might have a union of a couple sets and we can make a list of all the regions that make up that union. Now from those lists you can then figure out intersections, you can figure out other unions or whatever the problem might ask you to find. And of course once you have sort of your list based answer you can then go back and shade in the appropriate regions in the Venn diagram itself. Again, this will all make sense when we do the examples here in a second. Now just one caveat, when you make a Venn diagram and you list the regions on it, it's a good practice to label that Venn diagram as U sub R or S sub R, so universal set of regions or sort of the set of regions. That's what the sub R means. That way you, you don't confuse the region labels with the actual numbers that are part of the problem. So you might label region, you know, the intersection as region 1, but the problem may have a 3 in that region because that's the number of elements in that region. So you want to be very careful when you're labeling your regions in your Venn diagram to keep the region labels separate from the element numbers in the problem. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Um, so here we have a Venn diagram, of course, and we have two sets. They overlap, so they intersect. They're in the middle. And what I've done is I've gone ahead and split up the Venn diagram into discrete regions. So the intersection there in the middle is region 1. Over on the left, everything that's just in A, that's region 2. Everything that's just in B is region 3. And everything outside of A and B is region 4. So we can ask some questions. 
Which regions make up A? Which regions make up B? Which regions make up A intersect B? And which regions make up A union B? So we'll tackle all these in the next few slides. Let's talk about which regions make up A. And this is actually pretty simple. Regions 2 and region 1, those make up all of A, all of the circle, all of the set of A. So we can go ahead and shade that in like that. And see, that's how this works. This is obviously a very simple example, but it helps us solve much more complex problems. Which regions make up B? Well, that's 3 and 1, or 1 and 3. So we can shade it in like that. Which regions make up A intersect B? Well, if you know anything about intersections, you know that that is region 1 there in the middle. So we can shade it like that. Which regions make up A union B? Well, we know the union is anything that's an A, B, or both. So it's regions 1, 2, and 3. And we can shade it like that. So you see how this works? All we're doing is we're making a list of regions that comprise whatever we're asked. So here we're asked A union B. We go, hey, well that's regions 1, 2, and 3. And then we can go back and shade that in. Now let's take a look at sort of a different set of questions we can ask about this data and of course then answer. So oftentimes you are you're asked to find the opposite or the complement of some region or set in the intersection, etc. So now we are asked which regions make up a complement, or which regions make up the area that's not A. So if A is made up of regions 1 and 2, then not A has to be everything else, which are regions 3 and 4 we can go ahead and shade those in. And this diagram should make sense. So A is region 1 and 2. Of course, that's not shaded. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for everything outside of A. So A complement. And that is regions 3 and 4. We can go ahead and shade that in. Which regions make up B complement? Well, if B is made up of regions 1 and 3, then B has to be, the not B has to be everything else. So 2 and 4. So we shade it in like that. And again, this diagram should make intuitive sense. If B is 1 and 3, then everything outside of B are regions 2 and 4. Now here's a little more complex one. See, sometimes we have uh, regions that are expressed to us sort of as a unit, and then we have to figure out what that is, or maybe what the complement of that is. So here we have... A intersect B, and then we're asked to find the complement of that entire unit, that entire region. So, what is A intersect B? If A intersect B is region 1, which we know it is, there in the middle, then everything that's not that must be regions 2, 3, and 4. So we shade those in. So, that's everything that's not the intersection. That's how we should sort of interpret that. Now here we have the same thing, but the union. So which regions make up A union B complement? So the complement of that entire region. So if A union B is regions 1, 2, and 3, then everything that's not that must be region 4. So we shade it in. And again, we know that this white area is A union B. So everything that's not that, the only thing that's left, is the outside area. Well, here's a different take. Which regions make up A complement intersect B complement? Or sometimes my students will say, which regions make up not A intersect not B? That's fine. So first, let's figure out what is not A. Well, regions 3 and regions 4 are not in A. So that's sort of our first list. And it looks like 
this. Which regions are not in B? What's well, 2 and 4? So it should look like this. Now the question is asking us, what regions do they share? What regions do these have in common? So you can do it one of two ways. You can look at the lists. So not A is 3 and 4, not B is 2 and 4. What do they have in common? What do they share? That is region 4. Look, you can look at the diagrams. Is region 1 shaded in both of them? No. Is region 2 shaded in both of them? No. Is region 3 shaded in both of them? No. Is region 4 shaded in both of them? Yes. So what regions do they share? Region 4. And we would shade that in just like that. So you can do it one of two ways, the lists or the pictures. Some people have a mind built for lists. Some people have minds built for pictures and diagrams. It doesn't make a difference which one you use. I'm trying to show you a way where you can use both. So here's very similar. Not A, union, not B. So same thing, not A is 3 and 4. Not B is 2 and 4. Again, this is the same thing from the previous slide. Now we're doing a union. So what regions are either in uh, 1 or both? That's 2, 3, and 4. But we, again, we're interested in sort of the opposite of those. So we want this region. Notice there is no 1 in not A. There is no 1 in not B. Therefore, it's not part of the union. Only 2, 3, and 4 are part of this union. So let's talk about uh, Venn diagrams where there are three sets. So again, these are the ones that be can become very messy when you're trying to figure out regions that aren't given to you. So here we have a Venn diagram. We have regions 1, then we have region 2, 3, and 4, that's sort of in the middle. And then we have region 5, 6, and 7, sort of along the outside, and then region 8, is on the very outside. So again, these numbers are region labels. They aren't the number of elements in that space. That's why it says U sub R over there on the left hand side. In the next video, we will actually do these type of Venn diagrams where we're actually given the number of elements in each region. But again, these numbers represent regions. So we can ask ourselves lots of questions about this uh, Venn diagram. Um, what elements are in A? What elements are in B intersect C? What elements or regions, I'm sorry, are in A union C? So what regions make up these different areas? So talk about A. Which regions make up A? Well, A has to be everything in the circle of A. So that's regions 1, 2, 4, and 5. And again, we just shade them in. Just that simple. What regions make up B intersect C? So we get on there at the bottom, we look at B and C, and we notice they intersect there in the middle, that kind of football shaped, the American football shaped, and we have regions 1 and 3. Again, we're just making lists. How about A union C? Which regions uh, are those? So remember the union is everything that's in one or both, or in either or both. So we have regions 1, 2, 4, and 5. That's everything that's in A. Then we have to add to that the things that are in C. So regions 7 and 3. So A union C are the regions 1, 2, 4, 5, 3, and 7. And again, the order you write them in does not really matter. Now here's kind of a crazy looking one. So you're sort of, what we have here is a region sort of nested within another one. So here we have A union, and then nested we have B intersect C. Okay, so how do we solve this one? Step one, do the inner parentheses first. So what is B intersect C? Which regions? So that is regions one, and three. What regions make up A? Well, that is one, two, four, and five. So the B intersect C is one and three down there at the bottom. 
The regions for A are 1, 2, 4, and 5. They're at the top. And then we are asked, what is the union of those two things? So we complete the union, anything that appears in either or, or both. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So all those regions make up this picture. And it looks like this. So again, we started there by looking at the inner parentheses. We listed the regions in B intersect C, 1 and 3. Then we looked at the regions that make up A, which are 1, 2, 4, and 5. And then based on those two lists, we just found the union of those two lists. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now what about this? Very similar. So inside the parentheses we have B union C, and then outside of it we're going to intersect that with A. So step one, do the inner parentheses first. So what is B union C? Well if you look down at the bottom, B union C is 1, 2, 6, and 3, that covers the B portion, and then 7 and 4. That covers the rest of C. So 1, 2, 6, 3, 7, and 4 is B union C. What regions make up A? 1, 2, 4, and 5. We've done that several times. Now we are asked, what is the intersection of those two lists? So we find the common regions. And those are 1, 2, and 4. There is a 1 in both lists. There is a 2 in both lists. And there is a 4 in both lists. Now there are some things that aren't in the other, but again, we're doing intersections, so we want the common regions. And it looks like this. So again, we're just making lists, and then we're finding whatever we're asked to find, whether it be a union or an intersection. Okay, so just a summary, and then we're going to wrap up. So just remember that any Venn diagram can be broken down into several discrete regions, which we labeled here using numbers. Each set, subset, intersection, union, etc. can then be written as a list of regions that comprise it. And then from those lists, you can then figure out whatever intersection you're asked for, a union you're asked for, you know, whatever the problem is asking you to do. But once you have sort of a list-based answer, then you can then go back in and shade the appropriate regions in the Venn diagram itself. Just remember when you're using this region method, it's good practice to remind yourself that the numbers inside of it are labeling regions. They are not standing for the number of elements in that particular set or region or whatever. So just make sure you keep everything straight. Because sometimes, you know, my students would use this region method to solve their problems, but in each region they would have two numbers. <laughs> but one number was the region label, and the other number was the element of that region. So, you have to be very careful about how you label them. Some of my students labeled the regions with lowercase letters. So they would label the set a large or an uppercase letter. They would then label the regions in lowercase letters. So lowercase a, b, c, d, and so forth. Which actually, if I think about it, is probably a better way to do it. And then they would use the actual numbers given in the problem as they are. So it's completely up to you how you want to do it. Okay, so that wraps up our Venn diagram region method for figuring out different intersections and unions and complements and things of that nature within the regions of a Venn diagram. So a few reminders and then we'll wrap up. If you're having problems in your class, I want you to keep your chin up and you have to stay positive. You're a very smart person, a very talented person, and if you're having problems with this, you can get through it with the right amount of hard work, practice, and patience. Everyone around you, including me, has faith in you, so you should too. Feel free to follow me here on YouTube and or on Twitter. That way when I upload a new video, you'll know about it. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with your classmates. Put it on a playlist or something like that. If you think I can do better, leave a constructive comment below the video. I'll try to take that into account. And finally, just keep in mind that because you're on here trying to better yourself, trying to do better in your schooling, or trying to run your business, more efficiently or whatever else it might be, that's what really matters. So the fact that you're trying to improve yourself 
and be a better student or a better employee or whatever it might be, that's what really counts. So thank you very much for watching. I wish you all the best of luck in your studies or in your work, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.